Shalom, Yah Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the elders of Yah Call Halarim Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Harakadash for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwathim that's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. <clears throat> it's your brother Bayer coming at you with more precepts, man. More precepts. Um, all right. So I'm going to start off in the book of Job. Chapter 33 and verse 14. Okay, it says, For power speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. It says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed. Right? So the Most High speak to his people in dreams. It said that in uh, Joel 2, uh, 28. He speaks to his people in dreams, visions, right? And... I know a lot of us that's in the truth, we have a vision of like an apocalyptic time. The Most High show us an apocalyptic vision, right? And, you know, whether or not the vision is actually what it's going to be, we won't know until that time comes, right? So, the topic of today's video is a vision or a dream that I had years ago, man. Years ago, right? I want to say uh, maybe three years ago, three, four years ago. It when I first when I first found out uh, I was an Israelite, right? First found out the information. Uh, the Most High blessed me with it. a series of dreams, man. It was two dreams, like back to back. All right, you know how you have a dream and it be so... Uh -huh. So out there that you try to wake up And when you wake up You still be dead sleep But you just wanted to get out there dream for that moment Then you go back to sleep And like you had the same dream Again but it be different This is the scenario that happened Alright so the dream The dreams went like this Uh, The first dream I was in uh, Maybe from the south Right, we got Piggly Wiggly, right? Those are like, that's like a grocery store. And sometimes uh, during the summertime, they have tents in front of the pig. To, and it's, it's packed with stuff that, I don't know, maybe overstock or whatever that they try to sell or stuff that's about to get old and they try to get rid of. So in the dream... I was in one of those, but it wasn't for a grocery. It was a grocery store, but the grocery store was empty, right? I was in the tent, but the tent had nothing to do with food. It was like a medical place. Like it was like almost like a battlefield type thing, but it wasn't. But it's like the laws had everything had stopped and people were in the store Basically, like hiding out, kind of sort of, but they were they were there. Like I said, I was in the medical part in the tent in the front of the building. All right, something was wrong with my leg. Couldn't understand what what the problem was. It was some doctor that was trying to trying to give something to me. I wouldn't take it, uh, and it got to the point to where like I was just rubbing my leg back and forth, and I was finna take it. All right. And right as I'm about to take it, President Trump walks in front of the tent. And the front of the tent, you can see the entranceway into the store, the abandoned store. President Trump walks into the the um the store. He had two security guards with him, right? Like two FBI agents, big 
cornbread white boys, shades on, clean cut, uh, blue suit, white shirt, red tie, like big as hell, side by side, shoulder to shoulder with the man. So he walks into the uh, the store. Everybody really like really is turning up on this dude, like ready to cuss my and all this stuff. And like I said, I had this dream when I first got into the truth. Anybody that knows me personally, as far as the truth goes, who who I've shared this dream with, you know what I'm speaking of, right? So, dude goes into the store, and it's like he walks around like monitors a situation type thing, like a like a regional man, manager coming to check on a store, and he's getting ready to leave. He walks in with the two guards. And as soon as that man walked out, the two guards was, was, was beside him, shoulder to shoulder. Soon as he walked out of the store, all hell broke loose, man. And when I tell you, all hell broke loose. I'm talking about whatever pain I had in my leg, it was gone because my mind was solely on running away. And everybody else was like stunned at what was going on, but it was like the most I had put a spirit on me to instantly jump into action because I had already, you know, put my trust in them, right? So I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And somehow we end up on an army base. Like, I don't know where the base came from, but we were on an army base. And I don't know if you've ever been to an army base or a military base. It's spaced out with, like, big tall, not some some on tall, some of them are not like three to four stories tall. Right? And they spaced out, so it's just like an open field with a bunch of buildings. Right? So, I'm running through the barracks and I'm listening to the spirit speak to me. The spirit is telling me to go left. And when he said go left, I immediately go left. And it's like soldiers are now in the play. And these soldiers are not American soldiers. It's like they all they dress they dressed in all black. And it's like a conquering type thing. It's like they taking over. Right? So most I tell me go left, I go left. As soon as I go left, they coming from the right. I'm talking about deep. I'm talking about like ants on prey, right? He tell me go right, I go right. Soon as I go right, they coming from the left, like ants, right? So uh, I run, I run the side of a barrack, and I come out. Now, as soon as I come out, it's like a little Chinese girl, like in the way, like a little more bite, little little more bite, little bro. She's just in the way. So, I strike out. She strike out. The spirit ain't telling me nothing about her. At that moment, we just running. So, most I said, uh, like, sacrifice her. <laughs> so, I, I run between some barracks. He said, jump into a ditch. I jumped into the ditch. She jumped into the ditch. As soon as I jumped into the ditch... The soldiers enter into a building like right there by me. And as soon as the last soldier went into the building, the most I said, get up and go. I got up and I got up and ran. And so the most I said, do it now. I shot the cag under the Moabite girl. Soon as she hit the floor, when I tell you them soldiers came out of that building and were swarming on her like ants. But I got away. Right? So, that's the end of that dream. <clears throat> end of that dream. Right? I believe it might be a little bit more, but like I said, this was years ago. But I still remember these parts of this dream because it was so vivid. Right? So, I wake up. Right? Go back to sleep. Immediately go into a second dream. The second dream, now they got all of us. When I say us, I'm speaking about us, right? So-called blacks, 
so-called natives, so-called Hispanics, all of Negro descent. They got us rounded up, right? And like some kind of warehouse thing. And I can tell that it's by like a body of water, ocean, sea, I don't know. But it's a large, massive body of water, right? And I'm in that building and consoling everybody like, hey, we're going to be all right. Everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Just keep your head up, man. Stay strong, right? Keep the faith. We're going to be all right, right? So once again, Trump comes, and he comes with two bodyguards, shoulder to shoulder, same two. Same scenario, man. He walks into the place from one end of the warehouse, and he's walking to the other end of the warehouse. We're sitting in the top of the warehouse, kind of, sort of, like the top entranceway of the warehouse, so we can see everything that's going on in the warehouse. All right? He makes it from the top. And by the time he made it to the end of the warehouse, it was an open bay. That's how I know it was a body, a large body of water, because I could literally see the water. I could see ships. Right? I could see our port. Right? So, as soon as he made it to the other side, once again, all hell broke loose. And once again, soldiers is swarming into the warehouse, all black, and they just killing Everybody, they not asking no questions. They not asking for no ID. They ain't say I'm looking for this and that. They ain't say get on the floor. They just murdering everybody that they see. So I'm seeing this and the people are seeing this too because it's happening like in an instant. So we had to watch a few people die before it rightfully settled in that damn, they coming to kill us. So we, I immediately jumped into action, and I started fighting back. I grabbed uh, uh, some nearby pipe and started fighting back. And once the people saw me fighting back, they started fighting back, right? And we fighting and praying, bro. I'm talking about, like, it was a beautiful thing. It was like unity with, with the same mindset of... As a nation, we finna make it out of this. And we won. No more soldiers, right? Soldiers is gone. We celebrate, right? So, I look at the bottom of the, cause we still at the top of the warehouse. I look at the bottom of the warehouse, at the port, I see black cars pull up. All black tent. And those same two uh, agents that were with Trump, were now in their car and they were with several other agents and they were with several other soldiers and all of them were in all black. So we geared up for another fight, right? We got into the spirit. It was like Dragon Ball Z. If you ever watched that, how when they turn up, it's instant. Yeah, we was in there like that. And then I woke up. Right? So, let me see. Like I said, Joel 2, 2 and 28 speaks about having dreams and the Most High blessing you with those dreams to be visions. Because, you know, we, you always have, well, you don't always have dreams, but you have dreams. Some of them mean things. Some of them are just things that were on your mind at that time, right? But when the Most High bless you with something, it's a bit different because you feel it. And I've had other other dreams uh, which turned out to be visions because they came, they came to pass, all right. Um, so with that, this is Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass afterward 
Matter of fact, let me start at 227 just simply because I really do like this scripture. This Joel 227. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Yasha'ala, and that I am Yahweh, your power, and none else. Right? Personal. And my people shall never be ashamed. Right? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Right? And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Right? That's Yashallah right though. Right? But check this out. Verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Right? So not only will Yasha Allah receive these visions of the end, the heathen will too. Because the Most High is the Most High of all. Right? But, hey, yo, like I said, that vision that I had or that dream, it was literally a dream. Right? It was a dream of exactly what I just said. <laughs> That man came, that man came in, looked around, and when he got done looking around, all hell broke loose. And it was it was every man for himself. Like when nobody think about going to get nobody here or there, it was every man for himself. Scripture say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because the scenario that you have in your mind as it pertains to where you're going to be when that time comes, hey, they have a saying. You want to make the most high laugh, tell them your plans. Straight like that. You don't know what you're going to... You have no, no idea what will happen to you in the next five seconds. However many people die... Somebody just died just then in that pause. Somebody lost their life on this planet just then. So you have no idea what tomorrow brings. So at the end of the day, hey, matter of fact, so we're going to end it with this. Because I just wanted to express uh, that vision that I had or that dream that I had, man. Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Wake your ass up by that dream that they call the American thing, right? Because this thing is dead. Babylon is over with, right? It's a wrap. And with that, most I willing, you were edified by this video and these precepts. Call Halayim Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Harakakadash Shalom Yashallah.